Mouse Utopia Experiment Behavior Sync Caused by Extreme Material Satisfaction How will be a utopia look like? A place with no stress of life, limitless food, no homeless, no disease, and no natural disaster. This seems to be exactly what our civilization is pursuing. The more advanced the society is, the closer to the utopia. Whether this ideal society will become true one day, when it arrives, it is a heaven for human beings or a doomsday. About half a century ago, there was an experiment of mouse utopia. The attention and discussion of this experiment made it a host of science fiction works. The work also inspired the 1971 children's book Mrs. Frisbee and the Rest of NIMH, which also made into a 1982 film. The Secret of an IMH. From Huxley's Brave New World to the movie Soil on the Green and Mockingbird, much political fiction has been written about the utopia's potential to become a disutopia nightmare. Such stories are not mere entertainment, they are based on contemporary societal realities, often predicting the future by asking if this goes on, what should happen? During these experiments, rats were put to an artificial utopia city with almost limitless food and water. The only limitation was they needed to stay in a closed space. The man who played Mouse God and came up with this artificial universe was named John Bombas Cajon. Cajon spent his childhood tracing around Tennessee, chasing toads, collecting turtles, and abandoning birds. These adventures eventually led him to a doctorate in biology and then a job in Baltimore, where he was tasked with studying the habits of Novi rats, one of the city's chief pests. From 1947 to 1972, Dr. Cahill spent most of his time on the observation of the mouse behavior. The first mouse utopia he built was behind his house. In 1947, he constructed a quarter-egg red city and filled it with breeding pairs. He expected the city can grow up to be 5,000 population, but over the two years' observation, the population never exceed 150. Once the population reached 150, the rats' behavior became weird. They hissed and fought, and they became too stressed to reproduce. This fascinated him and also inspired him for the work of the following decades. While Cahon was working at NIMH, National Institute of Mental Health, in 1954, he began numerous experiments with rats and mice, hopping between patrons that supported his research and framing his work in terms of population. How many individuals could a rodent city hold without losing its collective mind? During his first tests, he placed around 32 to 56 rodents in a 10 by 14 foot case in a barn. He separated the space into four rooms. Every room was specifically created to support a dozen matured brown rats. Since Cajon provided unlimited resources such as water, food, and also protection from predators as well as from disease and weather, the rats were said to be in red utopia or mouse paradise. Still, at a certain point, each of these paradises collapsed. There could be no escape from the behavioral consequences of rising population density. In 1972, Cajon built his biggest, best mouse utopia of all, built up a quarter century of research the Universe 25, which was also the most famous one among all his experiments. The experimental field had a space enclosed by a square metal fence, with a side length of 2.7 meters and a height of 1.4 meters. It could accommodate a total of 3,840 mice. It was equipped with a tunnel for rats to move, leading to the rat's nest and the feeding field. On July 9, 1968, eight white mice, four males and four females, 
were chosen to be the first citizens of the Universe 25. The mice themselves were bright and healthy, handpicked from the institute's breeding stock. They were given the run of the place, which had everything they might need. Food, water, climate control, hundreds of lasting boxes to choose from, and a lush floor of shredded paper and ground corn cob. From then on, the experiment experienced four phases. Phase A: initial period, day zero to one hundred and four. This was the one hundred and four days before the first litters of mouse pups were born. These 104 days were marked by considerable social turmoil among these eight mice until they became adjusted to each other and their expanded surroundings. After the establishment of social order and the birth of the first litters of pups, it entered the phase B. Phase B: explosive initial population growth, the resource exploitation. From days 104. To 315. In late October, the first litter of mouse pups was born. After that, the population doubled every two months. 20 mice, then 40, then 80. The babies grew up and had babies of their own. Families became dynasties, carving out and holding down the best in Kitchen real estate. By August of 1969. The population numbered 620. Phase C, inhibited population growth period, is from days 315 to 560. Beginning at day 315, after colonization and continuing for 245 more days, the population grew at a much slower rate. Doubling only every 145 days, rather than every 55 days, as in phase B. In the normal course of events in a natural ecological setting, the young ones survive to maturity and replace the dying or senescent generations. The excess ones emigrate to find more social niches. However, in Universe 25, there was no opportunity for emigration. As the unusual large number of young gained adulthood, they had to remain, and they did a contest for roles in the field social system. Males who failed withdrew physically and psychologically. They became very inactive and aggregated in large pools near the center of the floor of the universe. From this point on, they no longer initiated interaction. With their established associates, nor did their behavior elicit attack by territorial males. Even so, they became characterized by many wounds and much scar tissue as a result of attacks by other withdrawn males. Female counterparts of these withdrawn males tended to withdraw to high-level boxes that were less preferred by females with litters. Such females were not characterized by the violent aggression of the withdrawn males. Because of the extreme demands of rejecting the other mature males, the ability of the territorial males to continue territorial defense declined. In response to the invasion of nest sites and the bases of ramps leading to them, the nursing females did become aggressive. Essentially taking over the role of the territorial males, this aggression generalized to their own young, who were attacked, warned, and forced to leave home several days before normal wilting. During phase C, the incidence of conception declined, and the resorption of fetuses increased. Maternal behavior also became disrupted. Young were often wounded in the delivery process. Females transported their young to several sites, during which process some were abandoned. The rate of population growth has an abrupt decline in phase C. For our practical purposes, from this point, there had been a foreseeable end in this utopia. Phase four, decline of population size, the death phase, 
from days 560 to 1884. Turning back to the end of Fifth Sea, the seeds of eventual destruction may already be seen to have been sown. By midway in Fifth Sea, essentially all young were prematurely rejected by their mothers. They started an independent life without having developed adequate affective bonds. Now as they moved out into an already dense population, many attempts to engage in social interaction were mechanically disrupted by the passage of other mice. The number of mouse pups born to this generation of females were significantly reduced and the female mice which gave birth showed a lack of maternal instinct and could seldom raise their young rats to willing. Some of the females chose not to give birth, like their counterparts in the third stage, hid in the upper floors of their apartments and chose to live a quiet life with the same single females. Male counterparts to these non-reproducing females mostly became the beautiful ones. They never engaged in sexual approaches toward the females, and they never engaged in fighting, and so they had no wound or scar tissue. Thus their pelage remained in excellent condition. Their behavior became largely confined to eating, drinking, sleeping, and grooming. Most of the last half of the population born in the Universe 25 were fully or largely like these non-reproducing females and these beautiful males. As their formerly more competent predecessors gradually become senescent, their already disrupted capacity for reproduction terminated. At this time, only the beautiful one category of males and their counterpart of females remained at an age normally compatible with reproduction, but they had long since failed to develop this capacity. The last male was dead on May 23, 1973, 1,780 days after colonization. The population was reproductively definitely dead at that time, although such deaths were predicted three years ago. Paradise couldn't even last half a decade. In 1973, Cahoon published his Universe 25 research. As that squared, the explosive growth and demise of a mouse population. Most frightening are the paralyzed he draws between rodent and human society. I shall largely speak of mice, he begins, but my thoughts are on men. Both species, he explains, are vulnerable to two types of death, that of the spirit and that of the body. Even though he had removed the physical threats, doing so had forced the residents of Universe 25 into a spiritually unhealthy situation. Full of crowding, overstimulation, and contact with various mouse strangers. To a society experiencing the rapid growth of cities, in various ways, quite poorly, this story seemed familiar. Convinced that he had found a real problem, Kahoon quickly began using his mouse models to try and fix it. His later universes were designed to be spiritually as well as physically utopic, with rodent interactions carefully controlled to maximize happiness. But the public held on hard to his earlier work. Everyone wanted to hear the diagnosis, no one wanted to hear the cure. Gradually, Kaho lost attention, standing and funding. In 1986, he was forced to retire from National Institute of Mental Health. Nine years later, he died. Dr. Calhoun's experiments were in the 1970s. The world population at that time was around 4 billion. A few decades later, we are living in a world with 8 billion population, with more technologies help us from poverty and diseases. It is maybe too rough to compare our modern world with Dr. Calhoun's utopia and relate ourselves to his mouth. But indeed, most of the top-ranked countries from the United Nations Human Development Index are all suffered from low birth rate. The total fertility rate measures the average number of children a woman will have in her lifetime. To maintain a stable population, 
countries need a fertility rate of two. Anything lower than that indicates population drop between generations. This number for the world average is about 2.4 in 2019, but the average total fertility rate in the European Union is calculated at 1.55 children per woman. If we take a look at the top 30 countries in the Human Development Index, only one country has a total fertility rate above 2, which is Israel. In 2018 in South Korea, this dropped to 0 0.98. It means less than one baby per woman, which makes South Korea the only country in the world whose birth rate has entered the zero era. Japan also has struggled for years with an aging population, a shrinking workforce, and a low birth rates. By 2065, Japan's population is expected to drop from 127 million to about 88 million. Not only the low birth rate indicates the mating and the maternal behavior have been disrupted in modern society. One of the reasons which caused the death phase in the mouse utopia is in the end essentially all young were prematurely rejected by their mothers. They started an independent life without having developed adequate affective bonds. When they were mature, the males became the beautiful ones, and females did not keep the maternal instincts. They were the last citizens of the mouse utopia. China has been well known as one of the fastest growing regions in the previous decades. But every year, there are approximately 69 million children left behind by one or both of their parents due to migration, which is equivalent to 30% of the children in rural areas. Internal migration, which mainly involves massive economically driven population shifts from the rural areas to the cities in China, produces a large population of left behind children. Many of these children face developmental and emotional challenges as a result of the limited interaction with their biological parents. What will be the cost of our pursuit of a utopic society? I do not believe the behavioral sink which described in Dr. Cahun's Red's Utopia is happening or will happen in people's society. I do believe human beings will find a solution before it arrives.